Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. Since mid-June until October, the market had been trapped between a congestion ban that was below between 438 to 445 and three quarters and a congestion ban that was above between 513 and three quarters to 519 and a half. During this incarceration, the market constructed a head and shoulders pattern. Still looking like a head and shoulders top right now, as well as an extension to its second shoulder from mid-August until the start of October. I've highlighted a neckline for this head and shoulders top in dark blue on my daily chart and it's currently at 452 even. The problem the market endured had been the sheer amount of force necessary to push down through this head and shoulders top neckline and try and fulfill the targets below. What I mean by this is that not only have the neckline to try and we have the market to try and push down the neckline, but nearby was the previously mentioned congestion band between 438 to 435, 445 and three quarters, containing the March, April and June 2013 highs at 442 and a quarter, 442 even and 438 even respectively. It looked as if prices had finally managed to break lower in early October, but the market turned back up and into the congestion and even exceeded it such that prices are currently sitting on top of the 440, 438 to 445 and three quarter band once again. So we've had multiple closes below the neckline and well below the congestion, but we are back over the congestion and challenging the neckline. This has moved the market away from a break lower into a possible force break lower territory. However, we have overhead a more diaphanous congestion band, one I really haven't gone into, between 456 and three quarters to 468 and three quarters. A band that was relatively easy to navigate than the others mentioned, but which now has three key potential bearish pressures within it. They are the declining short medium moving average, currently 453 even, which has capped the market only last Monday. Then the flatlining medium moving average, currently 460 and a quarter, and the declining long moving average, currently 465 and a half. At least two out of these three are descending to impact the market and one should not take away anything from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from above. In the meantime, as we await what happens, I will repeat some potential targets below, which I laid out two weeks ago for a head and shoulders top pattern. Hence, a primary target X would be in the 400 even zone, with a secondary hard to reach target X1 in the 354 even zone. Any such move lower would be very, very interesting as we have alternate neckline one currently at 401 and alternate neckline two currently at 404, both from the November 2019 to February 2020 move, uh, head and shoulders top in the way. They are highlighted in bright red and green respectively, plus the December 2020 low at 396 and three quarters, all of which are in the way. And I would note that these three supports stopped the fall of this market back in May this year. Winnipeg Canola. The key pat patterns here have been the July to late September double top, which we've seen play out to both primary and secondary targets below. Then below that, the early uh, mid-April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom, specifically the neckline, which highlighted in purple on my daily chart. It's currently at 699.10 which even this week has been influencing the market. And finally, what I consider the most important pattern here, bar perhaps the neckline, and that is the bearish Andrews pitchfork created by the earlier double top of the mid-July to late August move, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. On this last pattern, the market is at the moment just below the upper time, currently at 7.09.30. Prices had previously exhibited an affinity for the middle time, currently at 6.63.90. Okay, so the overall pressure has been bearish with the double top and then the bearish Andrews pitchfork. Looking below the middle time, well, we really don't have that much support until you start looking at the June 2021 high at 655.90. However, the move up towards the upper time is worth looking at potential resistances overhead. And an immediate one is the old July 2008 high at 710.80 which is followed by a congestion band between 723.70 to 729.40.
that actually contains the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 729.40. There's one final point and it is a messy one. We had two weeks ago a dead cross, a lagging bearish indicator of the declining short medium moving average currently at 738.30 down through the declining long moving average currently 750.80. This is already a bearish indicator even, even as I said so, a lagging one. However, we additionally could look at the moving average action from two weeks ago and the start of last week as being a possible bow tie formation of moving averages and a possible bearish bow tie formation of moving averages as well, formed of the slowly rising medium moving average, currently 757.20, the declining long moving average, currently 750.80 and the declining short medium moving average, currently 738.30. Now, before you start, before you even mention a word, I know, I know there's a lot wrong with this. For example, the moving averages are in the wrong order and one of them has been heading higher. However, the early indication of such a pattern would be bearish. Plus, the theory behind this indicates that between 15 to 20 sessions after the crossover, we may see a significant move start. Thus, and I would extend the window a little for this to account for the messy nature of this one, Thus, so between approximately the 17th to the 27th of November, we may see a significant, likely right now to be bearish, move. I will put no more effort into this one right now, for it is, as I have said, a messy one. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. The mid-August to early November 2022, that's right, August to November 2022, a year old. A year old mildly bearish shift pitchfork, as the one highlighted in dark green on my daily chart is still running the show here after being, as I say, a year old. This mildly bearish pitchfork guided prices more or less lower. Initially in between the upper time, currently at 40.52, and the middle time, currently at 34.20. Then for a while in May and June between the middle time and the lower time, lower times are currently at 27.88, before prices turned back up again in between the middle and upper tines. The significant recent patterns within this bearish pitchfork have been the June to September diamond pattern, highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart, and the even more recent late July to late August bearish shift pitchfork, highlighted in bright green on my daily chart. The market is again testing the combination of the upper tine here, currently at 37.16, the declining short medium moving average, currently 37.21. The July to date downtrend, currently at 37.30, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. Plus, messing with the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 37.06. It has done this testing now for most of October and the start of November. Additional to all this, and a little above all these resistances, is the flatlining medium moving average, currently at 37.75 and a slowly declining long moving average, currently 38.03. The long moving average capped the market's rise three weeks ago. Now, going back to the diamond pattern type from July to early September, it was indeed early September that we saw prices punch down and out of this diamond pattern type. The primary target for this pattern on the downside was in the 35.79 zone, with a harder to reach secondary target X1 down in the 33.75 zone. Well, the primary target was achieved in mid-October, but the hard to reach secondary target X1 is still out there and still open. There is also another potential pattern I'd like to discuss, one which I brought up last week, and that is the potential early September to date reverse head and shoulders pattern. I cannot tell as yet whether this is genuine reverse head and shoulders pattern or if it's, as it's not fully formed. And you, you see, we still have the construct the second shoulder and the overhead resistances to this market have resisted attempts to form that second shoulder. However, I thought it important to bring it to your attention. The neckline is not highlighted on my daily chart, but today is currently at 38.5050, just above the long moving average. Additionally, it is also way early to say if this will be a traditional reverse head and shoulders pattern, a pattern back up, or it will be the rare reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern. Should it form properly? It's still too early to say on those and that's something we'll just have to wait and see if it forms at all. Thank you for listening. 
This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.